You're probably wondering, Amanda, it's the middle of January. Why are you talking about gardens right now? Well, the answer is because now is the time to start thinking about your garden. <laughs> January is the perfect time to start planning for your spring and summer gardens, which is what I'm going to be doing right now. And I'm going to walk you through how I personally plan out my garden for the year. And I would love for you to come along with me and hopefully learn something that could help you in your gardening endeavors. Before deciding what I can plant, I need to actually know what seeds I have on hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through my seed inventory. Last year I put all of my seeds into a spreadsheet. So this year it's really easy. I just have to go through and update it to make sure it accurately reflects what I have on hand. So now I know what seeds that I have in my collection and I can refer back to that to figure out if I need to buy any more as I start planning and mapping out my actual garden plot here. Oh, I personally like to use a spreadsheet on my computer to kind of plan out where everything's going to go in the garden. Just give me a rough idea of where to put everything. Um, you can also use pencil and paper just as well. I like keeping it on here so that I can um, always have a record of it from year to year and I can look back and kind of see where things were planted the previous year or two and try to rotate my crops a little bit. It is harder for me to do on this small scale, especially because I don't know about you, but we don't need nearly as many, say, green leafy vegetables as we do tomato plants. So it's hard to like, you know, since they aren't equal amounts of each type of plant, it's hard to really truly rotate them properly. But I do try to put them in a new location of the garden each year just so that they're not depleting the soil and they're rebuilding it as I plant different things there. So I like to do that on a spreadsheet for those reasons. And if your garden area is a nice, neat rectangle or square, that's super easy to do. Mine is not, mine's kind of a funky shape. So I do have to tweak things just a little bit, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along and it won't be too confusing. I have this kind of uh, tilted, diamond shape that kind of sticks off of one end of my rectangular plot here. So if you can just imagine that this part is just kind of kind of tilted out here for the sake of keeping everything in my nice little squares, hopefully you can follow that part along. Um, but yeah, I recommend keeping a nice little geometric shape there. Makes it a lot easier. So anyways, let's get to the planning. Okay, so here you can see my plan from last year's garden in 2023. Uh, now this was not the final version per se. Some things did change as we started planting and um, some of our diet changed and I had to change, you know, adjust what I was planting and I never came back and made those changes on my spreadsheet. But this is a rough layout of what we had growing last year. So now that we're starting a new year though, I want a completely blank slate to start with. So I have simply copied that tab over and erased everything. So we simply have my blank garden bed. Now I can't quite get it all on one screen, but this is the furthest I can zoom out without losing my grid lines. So hopefully you can see enough to understand what's going on here. We're just missing like maybe one square foot of space there. I do a simple one to one ratio. So one square foot per square, just to keep it simple that way. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is off to the side over here, I am going to make a list of all of the vegetables I actually want to grow. Before I figure out where I'm going to put them in the garden, I need to know what they are. So. I'm going to go through here and I'm going to make a list of all the vegetables that I know our family enjoys eating, all the vegetables that I know I'm going to want to preserve for winter eating. Um, yeah, if your family's not going to eat it, don't grow it. Okay. 
But if it's something that your family loves and you know they're gonna eat it well, get it down there. <laughs> Write down all the vegetables that you for sure want, or maybe if I have room, I'd like to try this. Maybe a new variety that you've been curious about. You know, anything that you want to grow, make a list. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Now really quick, I wanna take a break and share with you a couple of really good resources, some book resources that you may find helpful in your garden planning endeavors. Not just how to plan them and how to plant them, but all just a wealth of information in these books. Um, everything from, you know, crop rotation to, you know, edible landscaping, all sorts of wonderful, wonderful information. Um, this one, the Suburban Micro Farm, I really enjoy. I probably should go back and read this again, actually. It's been a couple of years, but this one is really helpful and um, especially for small spaces. And the author is actually local to the area. I even, if I can get the page open, you know, have her sign my book. So that was fun. Got to meet her in person. Um, she is a wealth of knowledge for organic gardening. I really enjoy her newsletters and her website a lot. And I come back to her book for information. Um, uh, like choosing different crops to meet your needs when you're companion planting. That cat is about to try bonkers. Um, you know, she's really good, you know, spacing for square foot gardening, you know, different local plants to your area that would be easier to grow, you know, things like that. She's just really, really helpful information in here. So this is a really fun one, especially if you're in small spaces. I highly recommend this one. And then, and of course we cannot forget Melissa K. Norris and the Family Garden Plan. This is another phenomenal book that I highly recommend. Um, this isn't necessarily specific for small spaces like the Suburban Micro Farm is but it also has a lot of really good information. And one that I like to flip to a lot is over here towards the back. There we go. She has this handy crop rotation guide and she talks all about crop rotation in here, but it's nice for me. I always forget the order. So it's nice to be able to look back on here. And she also just gives examples of, you know, different vegetables and what, uh, type of plant they are so you know where to put them in the rotation, what kind of feeders they are, if they're heavy or light. You know, she also has some companion planting in here and what plants to put together as well for different reasons. You better shush. Um, this is really helpful, the seed starting. She has seed starting guides in here so you know when to plant to start your seeds, when to transport them, transplant them from the seed starters into the garden. You know, if you direct sow them, when to do that. Super, super helpful information for that. I look back on these charts quite a bit in the beginning of the spring and summer when I'm, or even the winter right now, when I am planting out my garden, when I'm starting my seeds and transplanting, things like that. Very helpful. And of course, with that, she has the Family Garden Planner, which is more of a workbook that you can use to you know, keep track of your records and it has all sorts of charts in here for planting an orchard, how much to plant, of what types of crops, you know, calendars in here for marking when you need to do different things. Um, we get a glance for weekly schedules that you need to tend to. I don't use a lot of the calendar bits, but um, in the very front here, she also, she has planning charts. Stop it. She has planning charts where you can figure out how much you need to plant of each vegetable, what have you, in order to feed your family, in order to meet your canning needs, etc. So super, super helpful. These two go together really, really well. Highly recommend. Now I gotta go on the cat because he's not staying out of trouble. 
Now when I'm trying to lay out my garden, I like to use companion planting when I decide where to place my different crops. And what that does is um, you can put beneficial together where they help each other achieve better flavor, better growth, better pollination, or sometimes even like pest control. So companion planting is a way to work with nature instead of against it so that the plants are benefiting each other and lessening your workload. There are lots of different charts and things you can find on Pinterest and just all over Google. I find this particular chart to be very helpful. This is one I refer to a lot uh, just because it makes it really easy to quickly glance and make sure things are okay or beneficial for each other. But there's also others like this one will tell you kind of what the end goal is by planting the two different things together, etc. So they can be really complex or really simple, but I personally like to refer to a couple of these when planning my garden and deciding where to put things. Now, this year I think I'm going to, I'm planning to take out the raised beds. So rather than having this kind of tip to the side look that I had in previous years, I went ahead and finished drawing out the garden shape and then we'll see how it turns out as far as making my rose on here this year. Um, I've also gone ahead and added the garlic that I have already planted in there. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to do now that I have my garlic in there is kind of look back at previous years where I may have put things in the past. So for instance, the first year we had added on the extension to the garden beyond the four raised beds. I had the tomatoes here in the middle of the expansion. And then last year I had them over on the right side. So this year I'm probably going to put them over to the left because tomatoes take a lot of nutrients from the soil. So I don't want to plant them in the same place really close together. I want to be able to rotate them you know, over the years so that the soil where they used to be has a chance to replenish by planting other things that take different nutrients from the soil. So I'm going to go through and start placing some of these where I think they will work well. And then I'll just be tweaking along the way. Another thing that I like to do is to color code each crop. That way, just at a glance, I can see kind of where one stops and the next one starts without having to like take the time to count how many square feet it is, etc. Um, or to look for, you know, just a little black line. I can just see, okay, this color takes up so many spaces. That's how much space of the row, how much feet of the row that I need to plant with such and such a seed. That just makes it easier for me. You know, you will figure out a system that works for you. And the more you do it, the more you can fine tune it. and figure out uh, your own personal system. different day kids will go from nap so real life here 
had to put this down for a while, but now I'm back at it. So I'm gonna make this nice to just take in small little chunks like that anyways. So I have my garden layout mostly planned at this point. Um, I do have a little bit of extra space in here, but I think I'm just gonna leave it blank for now because I always end up getting extra plants along the way and needing somewhere to put them. So, so we'll just work with this for now and I can fill that in later. Now comes the really fun part and that is figuring out what seeds to buy for this year. There's a gazillion different seed companies that you can find online, or you can buy from your local nursery. Obviously, once it gets warmer, if you didn't want to start seeds from scratch, I personally prefer to start my seeds from scratch. It's a lot cheaper. It's really not that hard. It doesn't take a whole ton of equipment. And that's just what I like to do. And the place I usually prefer to get my seeds is from Baker's Creek, which is rareseeds.com. Now they are a little bit more expensive per packet, but they always send extra free packets with your order. And like the more you buy, the more free ones you get. I don't know what their exact like, increments are for when they add a different packet on it's like five or whatever, but I always get free ones and they always have free shipping, which ends up making it cheaper than getting them elsewhere. Shipping, man, that just, it just kills. So I like getting them from Rare Seeds. Um, and they just, they have such a huge selection of some really unique varieties that you won't find anywhere else. And they always include like a history of, you know, how they found it or where it originated, which I think is kind of cool. So I really like getting there because I'm a sucker for pretty food. So I like the really pretty color, different color varieties and things like that. And they just, they never disappoint. So I'm looking over here on rare seeds and the hard part at this point is deciding what not to get because <laughs> there's so many fun and interesting varieties and so many delicious looking vegetables and beautiful flowers and it's, it's hard to narrow it down. So that's where I'm at currently is deciding, you know, looking at my inventory of the seeds I already have and feel, you know, seeing which ones I need to replenish. Uh, for example, my onion seeds are, they're a couple years old. It's not recommended to use onion seeds more past a year because they just won't germinate. Um, so either I need to get tomato seeds or buy starts somewhere, which is probably what I'm going to do. That's what I did last year. I got them from I got them from somewhere. I'll let you know, probably in the description. <laughs> um, and I was really happy with them, but that's just an example. Or for example, I wanted to plant another type of melon this year. So I'm looking for another variety of melon over here. I also have some flowers that I was wanting to get another type of tomato cause I'm a sucker for tomatoes. And they have all these really fun like like fruits and plants that you can get that don't take years to grow things like that or brussels sprouts i don't have i've never tried brussels sprouts before so that's on my list and then i'm still looking for that unicorn green bean that fits all my boxes so i'm gonna be scrolling through here probably much longer than i should to find all the beautiful, wonderful, delicious varieties that I want to include in my garden plan this year. From here, I will be checking the starting dates and the family garden planner to see when I need to start setting my seeds and then I will be getting my hands in the dirt. Well, there you have it. My garden planning routine in a nutshell. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and hit the like button and feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. If you're planning a garden this year, please leave a comment down there and let me know what you're most excited to grow this year. Maybe you'll inspire me to try something new. Until next time, happy planning and I'll see you soon.